I would like to take a moment uh, just to um, to thank uh, Her Excellency um, uh, uh, Dr. Luisi for being here. I've I've admired you and your work uh, for decades, and it's a true honor to to see you here today uh, with us today. Let me also uh, provide, as we say in, the, in, in, uh, in Philadelphia, a shout out uh, to um, uh, Ambassador Dubois, who I've, uh, who I've, I have known the ambassador for um, about 15 years. And he is, uh, as you, he is as you see him. He's true, he's warm, intelligent, uh, and uh, and has been the person who's helped to arrange, if not the person who arranged this week for me here. And so I wanted to thank him so much for that. And of course, there are a number of other people I could mention. I, I would like to mention that uh, I have uh, my wife here, my lovely wife, Cynthia Lorenzen, travel with me. And I have uh, a sister and cousin here, Joan Lorenzen and Marie Lorenzen. Please raise your hand. We're here. Thank you so much for uh, for being uh, being here today. Uh, but there are so many, and I don't want to spend uh, all my time. Thank you, everyone in the room. So I just I'm just with all protocols observed. Thank you very much. Now, first, let me just say it's just such an honor for me to receive uh, the Saint Lucia Medal of Honor uh, gold. Uh, it is something that is. Um, I believe is a, one of the highlights of my life and my career. As you know, I've been around the world and I've met many presidents, premiers, and, and, and premiers and had a number of awards. This marks, this is an award that is very near to me because it comes from my home and my homeland. So. But receiving the Medal of Honor is also an opportunity. It's an opportunity for me to rededicate to those things that I've spoken about in terms of you know working with the uh, the nation of St. Lucia, um, I was with uh, Dr. Nurse when we addressed the Parliament. We didn't actually meet at that time; it was virtual. But um, during that time, I spoke of some programs and projects that uh, I would like to see happen with St. Lucia and um, and the part that I could play in terms of working in this area. The, the three areas that are of importance are education and building the educational environment and, and, and doing my part to as little as I can in terms of being able to help to move the area forward. The second is, as you know, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, I'm a sports medicine uh, doctor, uh, take care of uh, athletes, especially athletes in boxing and other areas. And I was very gratified to meet the head of the, uh, the Olympic Committee for St. Lucia, the Minister of Sports, and also the head of uh, the head of boxing here at, on the island, and we've agreed to work together uh, on some projects involving youth and sports. And I think youth and sports is so are, are so important because my belief is that if we can build bio fitness and resilience, we build a stronger people and we build a stronger land. And so that's the project in, in, that, that uh, we'll be undertaking. The third project, as was alluded to is a project working in terms of the health sciences and a commitment to helping to build the health sciences here in St. Lucia through a number of different ways. Uh, one of the things that we like to do in terms of the research, the work that we do is we not just do we, do we do research, yes, but we also uh, do action. For instance, the program that Dr. Nurse talked about, I'll mention right now is our JUMP program, which is Just Us Moving program. We know, especially in terms of St. Lucia and other countries in the Caribbean, there are high rates of diabetes and other chronic illnesses that, that can, can affect us. We also know that we don't exercise enough as much and we don't have as many, as many opportunities to exercise. And so the JUMP program that we started about four to five years ago, funded by the Aetna Foundation and CVS, so shout out to them, um, has really been a program that we've worked in terms of communities of black and brown people to be able to address chronic diseases, chronic non-communicable diseases by Exercise, exercise exercise programs and also proper dieting. And these programs have actually had dramatic, you know, dramatic results in terms of decreasing levels of diabetes, increasing and also increasing physical fitness. And it's in my hope that we can bring this JUMP program. We've, we've already named this program 
Jump St. Lucia as a new program. Thank you. Yes, great. So I'm excited about the things that we're, we're going to be able to do together. And um, I, when I approached our university president and our provost and our chair of the board and said, this is very, very important that we create an alliance and an MOU to move forward, they were very, very excited about doing so. And uh, that's why so we were able to so quickly formulate an MOU between uh, our universities. Uh, and I say our universities because I know it's this, we, it's Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, but I can tell you right now within this decade, this will be Sir Arthur Lewis University. I can tell you that. So I look forward to, uh, to working in the years ahead with, uh, with, the, with uh, Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. Let me just say parenthetically, the naming of this college is perfect. Um, I had the privilege of meeting Sir Arthur Lewis. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but I was, I was in college then. I was a college student at Princeton, and Sir Arthur Lewis was this giant professor at, uh, at, um, at Princeton. I think he was the first black professor at Princeton in history. And I remember I called his office. And I've, I've said this story earlier this week. I called his office, and he said, this is Sir Arthur Lewis. You, you know, the art, this is it was, Arthur Lewis then. Professor Arthur Lewis, you're an undergrad. I was a, a sophomore. You, we, he just doesn't see sophomore students. And, and I said, you know, and so, he, so he said, said no, uh, you can't see him. And I said, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know my family's from St. Lucia. My, my dad, you know, grew up and he was born in Sufre. And so she said, well, wait a minute. Hold, hold on. You didn't tell me that. Let me get back to you. And so I, I was on hold. Oh, so Arthur Lewis will see you, of course. Uh, just let's make an appointment and you know and the next day I was I saw him this great Sir Arthur Lewis and I still remember parenthetically that you know when you meet really great people and you sit down I still remember coming to his desk and sitting down and it felt like the desk was like above my head and I was looking so I was looking way up at him um, but he was so gracious and so helpful and uh, I've always taken that with me in terms of being able to approach students when young students wanted to come to see me um, but it also spoke to his commitment to St. Lucia and his commitment to the people of St. Lucia and the young people of St. Lucia. And so it's so appropriate that, the, uh, that, that this institution is named, is named for him, named for this great man. So in closing, I think I'm going to be doing, we're going to be signing, doing the MOU first, and then I do a presentation. Do the presentation after or after the MOU? Okay, I'm doing the presentation first. Okay, so let me do a brief presentation of, on on my work and who I am, and and perhaps give some information about my philosophy of life. And so, um, and I want to shout out to all the IT people who help make this happen because uh, it's it's never it's never easy, and it's, it looks like this is all going to work out. So let me start with a little brief presentation on this. So. And this the presentation is about this area that I've called regenerative engineering. And so I work in this field that's, that's called regenerative engineering. And if we look at this field, it started with something called tissue engineering about 40 years ago, um, which can be defined as the application of biological, chemical, and engineering principles to the repair, restoration, regeneration of living tissues using cells, materials, and factors. And I, I created that definition about 25 years ago, and it's been a pretty good definition. But later, the editors of Science Magazine contacted me and said, listen, we've had this area of tissue engineering for a number of years. What's the future? And in a piece in Science Magazine and Science Translational Magazine, I defined what would be a new field. And I called this new field regenerative engineering. And the regenerative engineering is really what is a convergence or bringing together of areas that we didn't have 30 years ago that we have now for regeneration advanced material science and nanotechnology, work with stem cell science, which we do, physics, developmental biology, and clinical translation for regeneration of complex tissues. And this area, you'll hear a lot about the word convergence, which means the coming together of areas and insights from approaches that come from different fields. So we look for things that come from different fields that people weren't doing before and try to bring them together. And so, I'm, we really bring these areas together. There's a little, that's a little newt hand. One of the things that we do is we study newts and salamanders and how they regenerate tissues. And we try to bring those areas to, to be able to help in regeneration. 
So I'm just going to briefly just to review a couple things. One thing we've started, we, we worked on was regeneration of bone and trying to create something that would fill a defect to regenerate bone. We've, we do a lot of our work in animals. That's actually an animal arm, and a rabbit arm, where we actually can repair that and create this new bone formation, have new bone formation. That's the red area that's there. But we've also taken this into other areas. We've actually defined new fields and new subfields. One of the subfields that we've defined is, is inductive materials. We can take materials, put it in the location, and just make a tissue right off without any additive materials. And this is, a, this is our ability to create these inductive types of materials. We can combine special materials, special polymers, special ceramics, bring them together and write them the right way, and implant them alone. And we can create these areas where we can have these little microspheres where, which have the polymers. This is new bone, the red area is new bone. We can create these, uh, we could put uh, stem cells on these areas. The stem cells can make new bone. And, that, and that's actually, the green area is actually natural bone coming in. We've made engineered ligaments and we've created um, uh, ligaments for something called the ACL. If you're an athlete, you know that the ACL is a very important ligament. It controls motion, acts as a stabilizer, and you can get really bad injuries with these different areas. So we created uh, our new, uh, a new ligament from scratch. We engineer a ligament, it's called the Lorenzen Cooper ligament. I think it's the first ligament named after two black people. Um, and um, and it's, um, it's a remarkable matrix and in, in, in ligament. We can place it in rabbits and show how we can regenerate the tissue in rabbits uh, and you know, have rabbits running around afterwards. And this is what it looks like, the tissue that, that, looks, that, that, that looks great. And so this ACL technology won a big award with the, uh, uh, with the uh, orthopedic, in orthopedics, the Nicholas Andrew Award. It was named one of the top 50 achievements by Scientific American in the year. But I think the, the, our greatest uh, acknowledgement of our work was when we, when we were in the, the uh, National Geographic 100 scientific discoveries that changed the world. And we were number 30. We were highlighted number 30 of the scientific discoveries that changed the world. Now, put, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, to, to put this in perspective, number 85 was space travel. Uh, and number 15 was the cell phone. So we're number 30, which I thought was, you know, just about right in terms of where we are. Thank you. Yeah. So this area of regenerative engineering, we've, with our engineered ligament, we've now placed these in humans, and now we have over seven years uh, of this being placed in humans as a Lorentzen, you know, Lorentzen uh, um, ligament, Lorentzen Cooper ligament. And as was alluded earlier so graciously, um, we've been able to have some singular honors in terms of the work that we've been able to do in medicine and engineering and also in science. Um, I've received the Walsh McDermott Medal, one of the oldest, highest awards of the National Academy of Medicine, the Simon Ramo Founders Award from the National Academy of Engineering, which is uh, the oldest award of the National Academy of Engineering, the Philip A. Abelson Award from the American Association for the Advancement of Science, uh, which is given for signal contributions to the advancement of science in the United States. And of course, the big one for me is the getting the National Medal of Technology, uh, the National Medal of Technology and Innovation, which is uh, the highest honor uh, for technological achievement. Thank you. And I was very honored to get it from, uh, from, from President, uh, President Obama. So, um, and so what's next? Well, you know, this, we think this area of regenerative engineering, this, this, this new field, which is not so new now, it's about 10 years old, can really carry us to a lot of different areas. We now have a textbook that I wrote on regenerative engineering. We have a journal, Regenerative Engineering and Translational Medicine. Um, we have a meeting, a scientific meeting every year called the Rock Stars of Regenerative Engineering, which is sort of a cool name. Um, it's, it's a small, it's a meeting in which we bring lots of people together for like a, a day and a half where we do intensive work. And also we just have a new NIH training grant. We just received a million dollars from NIH to train the next generation of people in this area of regenerative, of regenerative engineering and, 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 uh, and, and also to train, train not only grad students, but also undergraduate students in the area. We created a new society uh, called the Regenerative Engineering Society. And it's the first society built on this area that we call convergence. And it's a, a unique society. Number one, the society, and if it's $20 under 20. It's $20 under 20. And so, um, and we encourage young people 
So today I'm, I'm announcing that we will provide, we will provide 200 free memberships to high school and college students here in St. Lucia for two years each. Two hundred. This is a society that we say it's built upon democratization. We want a society that has principles of obviously convergence, responsible science, that we do great science, and democratization, meaning inclusion and equity. This is the first, probably the first major society started by a black person, at least I think. And so the point is that we want to see large numbers of black people, brown people, being involved in this society and developing this new field. Uh, and and in a in a way that promotes an anti-racism, anti-racist environment, and so these are some of the principles of it in terms of moving forward. So um, we are now part of the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. They purchased us, and now we're a community American of the American Chemical Institute of Chemical Engineers, and that's our symbol. And I'm very proud that the American Institute of Chemical Engineers Foundation has, in recognition of the, my founding this field, has just created the Cato T. Lorenzen Regenerative Engineering Founders Award. Uh, which will be given out this this year in, in 2022. And so it's very, very gratifying to have that happen. So so what's next from there? So what we've talked about in Hartford, we've now talked about at University of Connecticut, our next goal, because we can now regenerate almost every tissue of the body, you know, every musculoskeletal tissue. We talked about the bone. I showed you how we can make bone. I talked about ligaments, how we can make ligaments, but now we can make nerves and blood vessels and all these different areas. So now we want to regenerate um, lost limbs. So I announced something called the Hartford Engineering, a limb project where we're going to regenerate an entire leg by 2030. And that's our, and we also call it the heel project, Hartford Engineering, a limb heel project to regenerate an entire limb by 2030. And so we're working on that right now. We're making progress. We have our foot in the door, sorry. Um, but we really are planning to, to move this area forward and it's an exciting area, but we think that with our work in convergence, advanced materials, stem cell science, physics, developmental biology, clinical translation, we can bring about this happening. Now, we've, it's, been, it's been gratifying to see the recognition that we've already had. Uh, I'm a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. I'm a, now a member of the National Academy of Sciences, the, the uh, National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Medicine and the National Academy of Inventors, which represents the five academies, the five major academies in the United States. And I think as a, I'm the only surgeon in history to be elected to four, even at four of the universities, even five of the academies that are, that are there. But in Europe, this has been recognized by membership in the European Academy of Sciences, the Royal Academy of Engineering, the World Academy of Engineering. And in Africa, membership in the Academy of the National Academy of Senegal, the, Na the African Academy of Sciences, and also the Benin Academy of Sciences. So the work that we're doing is really, uh, I think across the world, has been recognized as being important. Um, in Asia, a membership in, as a fellow of the Indian Academy of Sciences, the Chinese Academy of Engineering, uh, the uh, Indian Academy of Engineering, and also the National Academy of Sciences India. Just demonstrating the fact that, the, that this work has powerful implications not just locally at home, but really around the world. One of the areas I'm, I'm most proud of, probably because of the influence of St. Lucia, has been receiving the UNESCO Equatorial Guinea International Prize for Research in the Life Sciences. And I became the first person of American and St. Lucian descent to earn this award. Um, it took place in, uh, at, uh, at Addis Ababa at the African Union Heads of State Summit in 2020. And it's given to laureates who have been, made significant efforts through scientific research toward improving the quality of human life. I shared the award, among others, with Tu Yu Yu, who is the first woman to receive the Nobel Prize from China. And so it was great to be able to share, to, to share that prize with her. Um, and I was nominated, I was nominated by the nation of St. Lucia to get this award. <laughs> So the goal, again, is to regenerate a limb, and this is what we're doing right now. It's a multi-year, multi-dimensional quest, and it's, it's for us to be able to redefine how we treat uh, clinical disease. Now, I, some people say, well, this is incredible. Is it, going to, is it going to be difficult? Yes, it's, it's going to be difficult. I can tell you that right now. But it, it's, it's been said that you never know how strong you are until strong is your only choice. You never know how strong you are 
until strong is your only choice. And this was actually said by, you know, by Bob Marley. So that leads me to the last part of my comments, and that's the last part of my comments based upon um, my new book. My book is called Success is What You Leave Behind. Uh, I just published it two months ago. It's my autobiography. I'm very, very proud. It actually took me about five or six years, maybe six or seven years to get done. So um, it's a chock full of materials, lots of great information that's there. And I want to just share just a couple of things from that autobiography with you. Um, and it's, at first, it starts with the story of regenerative engineering and how I started, the promise of it, the reality, the hope in terms of what the future is. But then it also leads into a philosophy and talks about my philosophy that I've built over the years. And to sum up some of the philosophy, it, it, a lot of it as a, as a key to success is to be bold and, and take chances in life. I think it's really key to be bold and take chances, not crazy chances, um, you know, not jumping off the Grand Canyon, but, but measure, you know, measured chances in life, I think, you know, make a difference. Another key is, is working on being smart, working hard, being a good person and being loyal. These are very important characteristics that we need to che teach and, and, and view in terms of, to the young people to make sure that they are successful. I believe having courage is important. Um, I love the quote by Maya Angelou. I, I believe that the most important single thing but beyond discipline and creativity is daring to dare. Um, and being adaptable, being an adaptable person is very, very key. You know, and people talk about Charles Darwin and survival of the fittest. He actually didn't say that. What he said is not the strongest that survives. It's not the most intelligent. It's actually the one that's most adaptable. So being adaptable is so important. And then being resilient and optimistic, being resilient and optimistic. It's very, very important in terms of that. And I like uh, the Dalai Lama. I don't know him, but I like what he says. He says, choose to be optimistic because it feels better. And so being optimistic becomes important in terms of, in terms of life. Um, and then again, um, uh, we know Bob Marley and his great quote in terms of, in, in terms of that. Um, but there's some other great quotes I want to share with you. Um, one is, what happens now determines what happens to the rest of the world. You have an ability to make change. You have an ability to be the change. And everyone in this room, your work matters, your lives matter and you have an ability to affect change at a large scale in the work that you do. And this is from T'Challa. Who knows about T'Challa? Raise your hand if you've heard of T'Challa. Only two or three. T'Challa, you, you, you know T'Challa, right? From uh, Black Panther. That's his phrase. Uh, the other quote, and I'm going to you know, leave you with just a, two, more, two more quotes, are, you know, are quotes from President Obama, which I absolutely love. He says, keep exploring, keep dreaming. Keep asking why. Don't settle for what you already know. Never stop believing in the power of your ideas, your imagination, your hard work to change the world. And he's also said, we are reminded that in the fleeting time we have on this earth, what matters is not is wealth or status or power or fame, but rather how well we have loved and what small part we have made in making lives of people better. That's from our Superman. So um, I'm going to close with a few of my, my own personal thoughts. Um, your mission in life, what's your mission in life? Your mission in life is number one, have fun. Because you know, this is life and, and you should try to enjoy yourself in the things that you're doing uh, in, in every way that you can. And also your mission in life is explore and to be curious and to go about life with a great deal of curiosity. Um, I teach people and teach my students, look, uh, look at the end at the beginning. Look at what you want to ch achieve for, for life and dream high and look at what you want to achieve for the life. That's the only way in which you'll be able to get something, uh, get the highest points of life, is to look at the end at the beginning, look at what you want to achieve and go for it. Now, there are three most important times of your life. And the day you were born, obviously, that's easy. That's the most important time. The day you realize your life's purpose is the second most important time of your life. And the third most important time is the day you are truly living your life on purpose. So for the young people who are listening to me now, those are the three important times. The day you were born, the day you realize your life's purpose, and the day you are truly living your life on purpose. So work hard to decide what your life's purpose is. And then once you decide that, pursue that. 
Because when you're in the zone, in the day that you really are truly living your life on purpose, you, you are there. I always tell people that there are tons of challenges that take place in your life. The bigger the challenge, the greater the opportunity. So look for big challenges. Look for, and don't worry about setbacks or problems like that, because that comes with taking on bigger, big challenges. My daughter, who's a graduate of Princeton this year, very proud of her, I'm proud of all three kids, um, um, has a favorite, has a, has a, has a favorite uh, proverb that I've given her that she loves. And that proverb is, to stumble is not to fall, but to walk faster. So don't be afraid to stumble on the way. Don't be afraid to take on big challenges because those big challenges lead to great opportunities. So just in closing, again, my book is Success is What You Leave Behind, um, you know, Fostering Leadership. It's actually available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and where other fine books are sold. Um, and, uh, but I, what I've decided to do is that, uh, in, uh, to, for, for St. Lucia, is that we will place, we will place a book in every single school in Saint, and library in St. Lucia. I, and I do want to take an opportunity to, to thank someone that, who's helping with this. Obviously, we have our foundation, the Helen I. Moorhead Lorenzen Foundation, that helps support this. But, um, but we were also being supported by Dr. Alfred Mays, who is at the, uh, the Burroughs Welcome uh, Fund, which is a, a foundation in, uh, in the United States. And they've been great you know, supporters of the work that we're doing. And so Dr. Mays and Burroughs Welcome Fund, I want to publicly give them a, a shout out for helping support this. So again, I look forward to uh, continued work uh, in St. Lucia with you. Um, I, I, I am just so honored and humbled to receive the St. Lucia Medal of Honor. And, uh, and on behalf of my, my wife and also my family, uh, thank you so much for this great honor of being with you today.